G'day guys, how you going? It's Iski here. Um, I am about to start making some Christmas presents. I've got six days and uh, that might sound like a long time to some people but um, I'm going to be 3D printing these presents and if you don't know already 3D printing can take a very long time. In fact last year I was actually 3D printing all of my Christmas presents for people, which was amazing. I had the best Christmas present, uh, Christmas experience ever last year because I wasn't out buying stuff, which ruins Christmas for me. I hate going to shops and having to buy stuff. I can never find stuff to buy for people. It just shits me to tears. But uh, last year, I actually bought a 3D printer in November and I discovered there's some pretty cool files out there that you can print for people. And when you give them these things as a present, they love them. And last year for my brother, I gave him this, I actually printed this really cool dragon lamp and he thought it was the coolest thing ever. And uh, there he was sorted, so that was awesome. Um, for my mum and dad, I printed this, uh, it's a lithophane, so you can actually print photographs on your printer if you didn't know already. They're called lithophanes. And there's this really nice, really cool bloke on, on uh, YouTube and on the internet. He's made this website called lithophanemaker.com. And you can actually print your photos that you have of family members. So I made my mum and dad this box with lithophanes and I gave it to them. And they thought that was probably the coolest present I've ever given to them. And for my sister, I think I gave her a floating cup, which is she loves coffee. So it was like this cup, and I'll just stick a photo up for you, you can, you'll see what it is. And she thought that was pretty cool. So I can't remember ever having so many really awesome comments about presents that I actually gave to people. And the best part is I didn't buy any of them. I didn't pay for anything. I don't care about the money. It's more the going out and trying to work out what each person would want. And you're always ringing other people. What do they want? Uh, I hate it so much. But last year was so cool, I didn't have any of that stuff. So this year we're going to do the exact same thing. So last year for my brother, I printed him that cool dragon lamp. This year, he's a big Lord of the Rings fan. And um, I remember him saying that, wouldn't it be cool if you could print, if you could like have, do a Minas Tirith. So what do you think I did? I quickly Googled it and there's a Minas Tirith STL file on Thingiverse. And it's a Minas Tirith lamp as well, so it's extra cool. And uh, I actually have already printed that. I printed that um, not, well, not so long after last Christmas. I think it was in February. It was probably the last thing that I printed, and that's it there. I actually printed it for myself, I think. I, I scaled it up 50%, so this is 150% of the original. And it turned out great. Um, seriously guys, I'll stick up, I've actually got a lot of footage of me printing this, I'll stick up some of that if I haven't al already, but uh, this thing just turned out great. I think it was a 52 hour print, and I just remember for most of that 52 hours just sitting in front of it, watching it. Um, it's classed as a low resolution print, but hell, you know, I think it looks pretty damn good. And it turned out great, so I'm going to give that to my brother. If I want another one, I'll just print myself off another one. So my brother is getting this. They, that's him sorted of this year. I don't have to worry about him. Now, for mum and dad, because I did that lithophane box last year, they loved it. I put photos of their grandkids and them with their grandkids and just family members in general. Um, what I thought I would do for them is the same website, this guy that made this website where you can create lithophanes, um, he's also got... Um, this lampshade that you can make and you can put photos on this lampshade so I thought for this video that's what we do and um, I'll just quickly show you so we'll have a look at this computer this computer here this MacBook Pro I got at the dump so there we go so let's actually click on that oh, let's just go back a page now if you type in lithophanemaker.com I'll stick a link down below uh, this is the site that comes up. It's called Lithophane Makers. Now, if you see, the very first one must be one of the most popular ones, maybe. That one there is the lampshade. If I just go down a little bit further, this one here is actually the cube that I did last year. And um, this here is a moon, and you can put a photo of anything on someone on the moon. 
Uh, I'm actually going to do this one for my little niece this year. I've got this really cool photo of when she was four. She's, this is only a couple of years ago and she was holding this big wedge tail eagle and um, the eagle was probably bigger than her and if it had started flying while holding her she would have been taken away. Uh, but she decided she wanted to hold this eagle. Her older brother wouldn't do it, but she was she was gonna, and she did. Got this really cool photo. So I thought that would be a really cool photo to stick on there for her, and maybe do a frozen. Maybe for another gift for her, I'll put some frozen, like uh, you know, fa her favourite movies, Frozen, ob obviously. But yeah, anyway, let's keep going. This here, if you click on that picture, you get to this page, and you can just kind of. Um, alter all the dimensions so you can make lampshades that are that way or straight up and down or curved and it's really cool and you can change the you know the, the diameter and the, the measurements basically but if you go all the way down to the bottom there is this YouTube video so if you click on that it's the guy that built this site awesome guy funny as um, he is actually um, showing you how to you know what each measurement and each field represents if you want to change them and but you know I'm just going to stick with you know his default measurements they sound good to me and then he also takes you into either I think he takes you into Kura which I'll probably use as well and he shows you what measurements to use to you know to generate your g-code for your printer so I'm just going to use what he uses I think and uh, because it's going to be fast and uh, at least I know it's going to get done but um, that's what we're going to do I think rather than go too much more into it. What I'm going to do also is, you can see at the end of the table, that's where my printer is sitting at the moment. I'm going to move that printer from there and I'm going to put it here at the end of this counter. I'm going to move this diesel punk corset, which I made out of kangaroo leather and a whole heap of metal and stuff. Got a really cool photo of Sam wearing this. And I think I'm going to move that just down the line or stick it somewhere else because I want to stick the printer there because this table I want to use for other things and this print apparently is going to take like three, over three days and I, it's just, once you start printing you can't move it and I want to use this table for other things. So that's what I'm going to do now. I am going to go and get some G-code happening. I'm going to move this printer and I'll come straight back and we'll start printing. So <clears throat> I literally <laughs> made sure that um, I noticed that this was actually curved under itself and you don't want to get tangles when you're doing a print like this. So I just, you know, I went maybe a, a few meters. I just um, unfurled a few meters of this filament 
because yeah the last thing you want are tangles when you're actually doing it so this is white let's see how we go with this stuff eh Okay, so what I thought I'd do is before I actually start doing my major print is just print something small. And the reason I'm doing this is because um, I had black filament in here before I, I changed it out to white. And sometimes you can get like, you know, residual black filament kind of creeping into your, um, your, your next print. And it doesn't matter how much filament that you push through the nozzle to kind of try and clean it I find sometimes it just doesn't work and I want this lampshade to be really white so I'm actually decided to print myself uh, what's this this is a Google Home Mini invisible wall mount holder so yeah apparently this is going to hold one of my Google Minis to the wall so we'll see how that turns out but at least it's going to purge all that remaining black out of there. I tried to do it manually, I think I got most of it, but I like just to do some, even if it's just a calibration cube, you know. So, and plus, um, this will just make sure that the print's looking good as well. All right, so I'll bring you back when this is finished and we'll take a look. There we go, all done. Please just come off, oh, love that sound. Okay, <laughs> that's it. So that's my little purge print. I have no idea how these things are supposed to work. Let's just get a close up. I'm pretty sure, so we got our, our mini. I'm pretty sure this goes like that. So <laughs> this here gets screwed up against the wall and then this sits on top of that and the only thing I can think of is that the power cord holds them together. Seems a bit dodgy but it's the only thing I can think of. I guess that would be okay if the USB part definitely, well, let's go and have a look. <laughs> this is stupid. Why am I showing you all of this? This isn't even about what this video is about. <laughs> even seeing it. Screw it to the wall. <laughs> so simple, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's what we used. That's what I've used to purge my line, even though you don't have to go to all that trouble. I just wanted to print that anyway, and I knew I wouldn't have, I couldn't do it for three days otherwise. In fact, if you have a look, the base looks a little bit darker than the rest of it, the first layer, and that's because it had black in there, so that's the main reason I like to do that. Awesome. Okay, so let's get this other print, let's get this shade set up. So this is my little niece Priya. Sorry, I'm actually cheating. I'm just pointing the camera at the, the computer monitor. Um, and she's. this is gonna be one of the photos in our lampshade that I'm gonna to give to my mum and dad. So it's a nice photo, I like it. It's a good one of her, it's nicely cropped. Um, if I grab my mouse, I'll show you the other. I've decided instead of putting four on, to go with three. Now before, when I 
did the you know I tested it out with four it was going to take over three days but now that I've reduced it down to three it's going to take two days and 18 hours by the looks of things so that's photo number one this is my little nephew and uh, his sister Priya my little niece um, and that's another one I like so I think that looks good and we'll put this one here also of Priya and so three photos on this lamp let's have a look I've actually got a preview of the lamp I'm not sure if you can see this it's a bit dodgy doing it this way when you point the camera at the monitor you're probably going to get a lot of hot spots and clipping and all of that kind of stuff but yeah that's kind of what the lamp the shape's going to look like and um, what the photo should look like on this lamp now I'm pretty sure it's about is it 250 mil high um, and I'm yeah so that's just that'll give you an idea in fact if I zoom out you've seen how big the um, the printer is if I zoom out you can actually see that's the printer there and that's how big the lampshade is in comparison to the printer so I thought I would show you that before I started printing so I guess let's start printing um, I've already taken the USB so on that SD card in there we have our g-code Now I've decided to do this, is that the best spot for it? Where should I set you guys up there, is that, is that okay? That might work. Now I've decided to um, put a brim on this print so the guy that you know made this site and was doing the whole you know how to video and everything he said that he likes to do a brim just in case it starts curling up um, so we'll see how we go with that so basically I could never get brims off my my prints but he just said use an exacto knife you know or a Stanley knife or whatever we call them in Australia just a razor blade cut it off and that sounds good enough to me so I am going to go to my print options and I've named it litho lamp I guess I'm just going to hit print. <laughs> See how we go. All right, so everything's starting to heat up. Hopefully this is going to be good. I mean, I've only done a couple of small small jobs on this um, printer since getting it going the other day, and they've basically been little little prints in the center of the print bed. Now the problem I have with this printer is that it's not um, auto leveling so I'm kind of you know leveling the old-fashioned way which I've never had a problem with but this particular print is going to be taking up I think a lot of the bed so hopefully we don't have any you know major discrepancies but I guess we'll soon find out. All right, here we go. Got to be seen. Another two degrees to reach 200.
it's looking really good. I mean, I've got this tiny little spot there, but um, I don't think that's actually the that's actually not um, a bad leveling. That's actually the the uh, the build sheet that I put down this surface here when I when I got it in the mail it was actually all creased and that's a slight little height thing in the cre in the crease line so I'm not too concerned about that I think this is going to be good but this is going to be a big lamp <laughs> Yeah, and this one here where it kind of gets a little bit faded you can see how the it looks like it's bottoming out there that's actually another crease line in the um when i got this bed not this bed the um the actual build plate this this build surface it's like a big sticker and uh, they put it in a um like a post pack padded bag but it gets bent up and screwed up anyway so yeah, you know you just never know what you're going to get but um Apparently, mine was pretty good compared to what a lot of other people's get, you know. So I'm kind of happy. And like I said, this is just the brim anyway.
<laughs> there you go. Okay, update time. Update time. Look at that. We are at basically 21 hours. So it's taken 21 hours to get this far. And it is looking amazing. It's looking really good. To be honest, it's hard to think that it's going to be another two days. So there's, um, it's, yeah, virtually two days to go. But um, I, I can't see that happening. It looks like it's going to be finished within 24 hours. But, hey, listen, I say that about a lot of my big long prints. So, And it always turns out to be roughly what Kura um, approximates in the in the program so yeah two days to go but you can kind of see we're in the fun part now you can kind of see there's a bit of texture happening I love this part in fact I think I'm pretty sure that this part here is the bottom of that um, headshot of Priya my little niece I kind of recognize these things but um, yeah, it's looking really good. Uh, the only thing I've got one, it was a dilemma, but I'm kind of looking at it as kind of a blessing in disguise. This, this diameter here, it's supposed to be 26 point, uh, 26 mil basically, and it is 34. So I got it wrong. I went back and I had a look at the, the program um, and he did, yeah, he, he it's my fault. I measured it wrong. Basically, I'll show you the. Um, I'll actually show you the, the lamp base that I've got for this shade. Um, oh, where is it? Well, check this one out. I found this one at the dump, and this is the one that I was decide I decided to use. I thought that's pretty cool. In fact, I bought one at um, where did I get it from? Kmart for ten dollars, and it was a little. It was smaller than that, and I was kind of thinking to myself, man, I'd like a bigger one. And the following day I went to the dump, which was yesterday, and I picked that up. I couldn't believe it. I didn't think I'd find a, a base for it um, so quick. Um, so anyway, yeah, so this here is 26. That's the problem I have. This whole get out of the way printhead, that hole there is miles too big. But to be honest, I think it's a good thing because this is... Um, I think this is basically like a universal size when you're using more of a, a normal size light bulb. Whereas this socket here is for, uh, I think they're called, is it E14 or something like that? Where they're these small light bulbs. So I don't know if it's going to be bright enough to light up this lamp. I'd, I'd, I'd say I probably would have wanted to get something a bit brighter. So I think it's a good thing. Uh, Mum and Dad, they've probably got heaps of lamps. So what I might do is actually give it to them um, attached to this base because at least they can turn it on, you know, and see what it looks like and get excited. And I'll tell them I'll get them another base at some point or they can just use one that they've already got. But um, yeah, the problem is trying to fit that shade over here. And I don't think that's gonna be much of a problem because I think if you're smart, you can kind of work anything out. And I think I am smart <laughs> sometimes. No, what I meant to say is I think um, if we get ourselves like a, you know, a big washer or a big ring and just slide it over there so that it sits on top of this ledge here, um, then that lamp should basically fit on top of that and then we will lock it in with this lock screw there and I think that'll be perfect. Um, so yeah, they may even just want to use this, this base, you know, but um, I think, I think it'd be nicer with a, a larger, brighter bulb because I think those E14 bulbs are quite dim. But um, that's the plan. That is the plan. I, <laughs> I quite like this, you know, if, I'm happy to hold on to this and use it in a future project. But um, it's looking good. So I will come back shortly and give you another update. But um, yeah, the only, well, we've got a little bit of stringing, just, a, it's nothing really. It's a little bit of wispy stringing. So I, I'm just been pulling it off. To be honest, what I like to do is grab the, the alcohol torch and uh, just blow it with some, you know, fire. It kind of burns it away like cobwebs.
Computer, lights. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so we are at 71% and it has been basically 45 hours. And check this out. It's grown, huh? How good is that? It's getting, it's really coming along. You can actually see that's that sign that little Priya was holding, the have courage and be kind sign, which if I'm not mistaken is a line out of, um, is it Cinderella? I think it might be Cinderella. Hang on, come on, gimbal, you can do this. There we go. And uh, yeah, really stoked. It looks really good. You can actually see Priya's headshot developing nicely. So, yeah, it's good. in fact, the only photo I can't see is the one at the back there. And if I really kind of put my head towards the back, I might be able to squeeze through and, and, and cop a look, but I kind of want that to be a bit of a surprise for me as well when I turn this on for the very first time. And that brings me to another point. What Kura was saying, that this is gonna take two days and 18 hours, I think they're probably spot on, you know? Yesterday I said there's no way this is going to be any more than another 24 hours. Uh, uh, I got it wrong. So I reckon another 24 hours from now, this will probably be ready to pull off. But um, yeah, for you guys, it will seem like a couple of seconds, I guess. But for me, I am definitely going to have to wait 24 hours. I'll see you soon. Hey, I'm back. I'm back. And what do you hear? You hear nothing because the printer's turned off. And it's turned off for a reason. And that's because we finished. <laughs> and it was successful. How cool is that? It's awesome. I'm pretty happy. I'm really happy, actually. We're about to pop it off. Uh, funny thing is, this morning, I actually went to bed last night at about 1 o'clock in the morning. And it was still going. It was at 93%. And I was pretty sure that by the time I wake up, it'd be finished. But um, I had one of those <laughs> nature call moments uh, at about 5.30 this morning. So I thought I'd put my head in and it was on 99%. So I got to film it finishing and, uh, you know, see it, you know, completing, which was uber awesome. So pretty happy about that. It, um, it turned out great. Well, we'll have a better look as soon as we pop this thing. Hopefully we'll get it off okay. Um, I don't see there being a problem. In fact, I've actually already grabbed my little scraper spatula and tried to get it into this corner in there and it looks like it's gonna lift up that brim. Actually, that brim was a really good idea. I think that's gonna make it quite easy to get off. So what do you say? We put this camera down and, um, well, I put this camera down and see if I can pop it, eh? Let's have a look at this. Set you down there. All right. Oh, come on. Actually, not as easy as I thought it was going to be.
Maybe I should take this bed off, you think? This brim isn't actually helping like I thought it would. I thought it would act like a lip just to get my scraper underneath the whole thing, but it's not. I don't want to hurt it. I don't want to break this thing, so this is one print that I don't want to break. And I'm going to take this off. Let's bring it over to this table and try and get this thing off. Oh man, this sucks. Let's turn you around. Let's put you here. Angle you down there. There we go. Oh, come on. Just get off this thing. When he does it on his video, it just pops off straight away. I wonder if I should heat this up. Should it be hot? I don't know. This is cold now. It's really cold, so. And, but people put them in their freezer, you know, to get them off. I wonder if I should, um, I don't want to, I could literally just, I could bang it down, but I don't want to do that. Oh, come on, how do you get them off? It's been ages since I had to get something this big off. Oh, should I heat, heat the bed up? Would that help? Or would that make it worse? I feel like I'm going to cut my hand on this bloody thing. Ah, come on. No, I'm not going to force that. Listen, I might actually heat this up. I don't know if that's going to help. I'm pretty sure all the other times that I've actually pulled these big prints off, I've had a hot bed, so... Um, let's give that a try, although this might actually make it worse, it might make the layers more, you know, yeah, it might make it easier to actually pull the layers apart, who knows, but um, let me just go temperature, go manual, we'll heat this bed up to say 60, whoops. And of course, nobody's even watching because I forgot about the cameras. So I'm just heating this up for a little bit and see what happens. But, um, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, literally when this, uh, this guy, the guy that uh, designed this, I think his name's Thomas Brooks. Um, he just comes over and it just comes off. It's like, what the hell, dude? Give us some instructions how to do that. <laughs> I mean, um, but yeah, uh, bring on this wham bam. I can't wait to get my wham bam. All I'll be doing is just, you know, lifting the flex and giving it a flex and it should pop off. But this sucks. In fact, that's what I might do later today. Oh, that's what I should have got dad to get me for Christmas. He was asking me what I wanted. Damn it, why don't I think of these things? Now I have to pay for it. <laughs> uh. 
I know a lot of people say pull this off and stick it in the freezer, but um, yeah, I don't know. Let's try this. Maybe, maybe you stick it in the freezer when it's hot like it is now, and maybe you get some kind of expansion. That might that makes sense. Although my freezer is not big enough at the moment. Come on. You know, I feel like getting a hammer and actually chisel on this. Actually, that might not be a bad idea. I hear these people doing this all the time and you think to yourself, what the hell? We should take this off. That's what I'm going to do. This is nuts. See, this is a brand new, this is the very first print of, this is a new bed. Um, adhesion layer and oh man it's it's fighting me should I give it a tap I should give it a tap it's pretty warm all right Let's gra <laughs> grab our hammer um, grab you guys where should we go and do this? Let's do it on the floor down here. We just happen to have a lip that we could probably use. Let's just bring you down. Let's stick that there. If this breaks, I'll be so pissed. All right. Let me see if I can angle you guys. You can't see anything. All right, can you see what I've done? I've got a lip here. So this is just pushed up against that, the bed is. Let's just get a corner in there and give it a tap. Oh, come on. Oh, that's a good sound. I think we got to start. We got it started. It's under. It's under for sure. Okay. I've never had to do this to get a print off ever. I've done some pretty big prints. Let's go this way. See, it's got these cross beams. These cross beams in the center there. I don't want those to snap. So I'm trying to kind of get my scraper over to them and then push in to get under them. There we go. So that one should be taken care of. Let's do this one now. Man, it's stuck down so well. All right, one more. Could you imagine if these broke? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Did we just bring up some of that bed? I think. We might, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know. Looks like there's a bit of, bit of black there. It could be from the bed, but there we go. Oh, finally. Oh, let's bring it over here and take a look. I'll just set you down. Angle this camera over. OK, 
Okay, so I think we need ourselves a razor blade. Oh, I think my Stanley knife is in the car, but I do have some razor blades, so let's just pull one of these out and just run this along there. You guys seeing that? Yep. Listen, I might just do this on my own and bring you back, eh? Sounds better. Wow! 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 All right, so we might just use a bit of 400 grit. I've got a big sheet here. And I mean, the stringing in this print, the stringing was nothing. It was really hardly anything. It's just a little bit of, just a very minor bit of fluff. There you go, it's basically, that's it, it's fixed. Wow. Well guys, it looks awesome. I'm pretty happy it's excellent. Like I, I just gave it a bit of a, a light sand on the inside, just to get rid, rid of some of those cobwebby looking strings. I mean, that would really nothing. Um, but it looks sensational. They're just gonna be blown away when they see this, especially when you turn it on. Which, um, that's what I reckon we should do right now. Do you think we should turn this on and see what it looks like? I do. This has taken, oh man, I'll, we'll work it out shortly. But, um, awesome, awesome. Okay, let's, I'm going to set this up and I'll bring you back, okay? Okay, Groovers, so this is it. We've actually printed it. It's finished, it was successful. And now we're gonna put it on this base. Um, I haven't seen how this is gonna turn out, but we had some luck though. I worked out a way to actually attach this to this without cutting anything or you know getting any washes or anything. I, I'll show you right now. But um, we're gonna put this on here and see how it turned out because I'm just busting to know. In the end, it took, I think, uh, two days and 16 hours if I've worked it out correctly. I think Kura said, uh, it would take two, day, two days and 18 hours, so they were pretty close, so that's, that was pretty good. So check this out. Now, I think I was telling you that I found this base at the dump a couple of days ago, and when I printed this lamp, I made this way too big, but it was good because it needs to be that big because I want to give it to mum and dad and I want them to choose their own base. And this needs a large bulb, and this is for a large bulb, whereas this only takes a small bulb. But you can see that is just going to be swimming on that, that socket. But check this out. What I discovered is if I actually take, well, this ring here, it's, it's, I think I've tightened it too much, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to undo it. But yeah, I actually flip this ring over so that you kind of get a little bit more length. So this is actually, this ledge is actually falling down a little bit. Just gives you a couple of extra mil. And then what I did, check this out. 
Um, this is the lamp base that I actually bought from Kmart for 10 bucks. What I thought I'd do is take this off, this one here. Now, what we should be able to do is this should actually fit on that ledge, which it does really nicely. But because of the height here, it's actually no, it actually comes up basically right to the, it's basically sitting flush, this to that. But what I thought we would do is actually, instead of putting it down that way like it's supposed to, we'll flip this over so that, you see what I'm saying, don't you? So that actually should go down into the ledge. And it doesn't matter, let me just do this. But there we go, look at that. How good is that? Oh, how good is that? All right, so I'm dying to see what this looks like. Um, I've got this really, it's like a candle bowl, but it is warm white. I didn't realize it was warm white and that's a good thing. So let's pull that out. And it's a screw in, it's not plugged in. <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know if this base works. You would think that it would. Let's move some crap out of the way here. So what do you think? Are we ready? Let's get our cameras ready. Uh, well, you've been seeing that spot. Let's actually, oh yeah, let's put that there. Are you guys, how are you guys looking? Can you see this? Yeah, that looks okay. All right, so I am gonna plug this in. I don't know if it's turned on already. Oh no, the switch is busted. That's why it was tossed. Are you serious? Oh, you're kidding. Why didn't I check that before? The bloody switch is busted. Oh, now I have to fix a switch. Shit, how do you get into these things? God damn it. Um, bloody hell. Can I fix a switch? Can you actually get into here? Yes, it's unplugged. Come on. You might even just bypass this switch, eh? And just turn it off and on at the wall. I get Dad to do that for me all the time. I used to. In fact, that corset lamp, that's bypassed. Oh, how do you get that off? Oh man, these things are sealed. Can we get into there? I think we can get in there. God damn it. All right, so forget the switch idea. I'm not gonna fix that. It's just gonna drive me nuts. What we might do is replace how about we just replace this entire cord let's just replace this entire cord with another one and um it looks like we can actually get can you see this we can actually get in here i think is that how you do it <laughs> Looks good to me. All right. So I see what the, gee, that's nasty, isn't it? That's done in the manufacturing process. Okay, so I have to go in there and pull this whole frickin' thing apart now. Just, ah, oh, shit. Damn it, I wanted to see what this is gonna look like. Fuck you, dump. Why do people throw out stuff that's busted? All right, let's cut that off. So we're tossing that. Ah, sh okay. 
So let's get in here. Let's actually, is that a screw? I guess it is supposed to be a screw. Alright, let's push that through there. Ah, oh, that was going to be way too easy. Nothing's that easy. So how the hell, <laughs> how the hell do you get to that nut? Mm. Shit, it's right at the end. So what do you think? Do you think this will work? Think they're long enough? I think they'll do the job. We should be able to, I don't even know if you can see in there, but there's a nut right at the base, right at the top here holding this socket in. So let's just see if we can grab that. Oh yeah, it's turning. In fact, what I might do is just take this bulb out. Take this shade off. Maybe hold that nut with these pliers and twist this around. I think that's off now. There we go. All right, so let's have a look at this. How is this attached? Is this gonna be a pain in the ass? Oh, listen, I could attach it just to these wires, but um, I'm beginning to think that maybe I should just uh, pull out that, um, one that I bought. It's only, it's exactly the same. Uh, let's just pull out the one that I bought. It's not going to be what they're going to use, so who cares, right? As long as that socket part is the same length. I don't think that's going to work. It might work. Oh, it just bites. It just bites. How good is that? Oh, it just bites. Okay, so that's gonna work. Whew. How am I gonna do this with this video now? All right, I'm not gonna read, I'm not gonna refilm all of that. Actually, that's nicer anyway. That base, check that base out. That base kind of looks like it's got layer lines on it, so it kind of fits. In fact, that is actually a cool thing, I reckon. So there you go. Um, all right, are we still watching? Are we still watching after all of that? So our dump find base was a total disaster. The switch was stuffed. So I went to, um, uh, replace the the cord and just have a cord and no switch but um, I couldn't find how you pull the pins out of the socket so I thought let's actually try the base that I bought from Kmart which is this one here and 
I didn't think that the socket was going to be long enough and it actually just works with the help of the um, Luckily I did find that one at the dump because I had that ring So we're using two rings to hold this in when you normally just use one But there you go. It just bites. It just just works So the cool part about this is it looks like it's got layer lines, right? There's layer lines and there are layer lines in this print. That's one thing that I did notice this particular lithophane printed with layer lines, um, whereas my box didn't. And I think I know why. I'm pretty sure with that lithophane box, all my Kura settings were different. They were really fine tuned and yeah, and this time they weren't. But let me just grab this bulb. Let's chuck this in. I'm dying to turn this on. All right, oh, does that fit? Oh yeah, that fits, lucky. All right, I'm going to turn some lights off. Hopefully you can see. Are we ready? Are we in frame? Actually, that base is quite nice. I like it. It's actually a really nice... I thought it was going to be too small for this light, so I'm quite happy with that. All right, so can you see there? How about you guys up there? Can you see? I'm sure you can. I'm just going to plug that in, race around and see if you guys are in shot. Let's just drop you down a bit. Here we go. The grand reveal. We got a switch. Awesome. That looks pretty good. I love it. I'm glad that's a uh, warm white bulb. That looks great. What do you think? It definitely gets darker towards the top. That's the first thing I'm noticing, but that's because the bulb is only like two watts. So we def definitely need a brighter bulb, but there you go. Oh, let's have a look. I haven't seen the photo of both of them together. So uh, I think I must've just saw it. Where is it? I didn't even take any notice. There we go. How good is that? Yeah, this one printed with a few layer lines, but uh, I don't think that matters. I am noticing, the only other thing that I'm noticing is, see there's some banding there, there's like a dark banding and there's a light type of banding. I don't know what that is. What would be causing that? Because I would think, you'd think that it'd be different temperatures of the nozzle, but um, yeah, that's strange. So there's like a banding that goes around, but I don't care. Mum and Dad wouldn't care. And plus, I'm sure once that's, you know, got a brighter bulb, all of those things will kind of fade away. But there you go. It looks cool. I love it. You can see the have courage and be kind sign. Awesome. So, Merry Christmas, Mum and Dad. All right, guys, I think I'd better wrap this one up because this is taking so long, this video. But um, I guess it's appropriate considering how long it takes to print one of these things. Almost three days, eh? <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. It's awesome. And I, I do like this base. It kind of marries in nicely with the shade. But uh, there you go. Love it. Hope you like it. Um, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.